Building boxes is great practice to get better at woodworking. Usually I use my table saw for this type of task, but today I have the added challenge of only using my circular saw. With this crosscut jig I have here, the first thing to do, I've got my piece of scrap alder. So both edges are pretty rough on this piece, so I'm gonna get a nice straight edge first thing. And now I should have a nice straight edge. Yeah, that's looking really good. <sighs> this next part's kind of tricky, getting a parallel edge from here to this next cut I'm gonna do. I know this edge right here is pretty close to this cut edge as far as being parallel. I'm gonna clamp down this side. And then now I'm gonna use my combination square figure out exactly the depth of this relative to this end. And let's see how close I got. Five and a quarter, I'm right on. I don't think I'm gonna have enough material. Hmm. I'm gonna get five sides out of this board. I was thinking I was just gonna use this one board, but I don't think I'm gonna have enough for the dimensions that I wanna make this. <sighs> Checking to see how accurate that cut was. It's looking really good. This will be the end piece. This will be another end piece. And then this needs to be divided into three equal parts, one being the lid and then the two sides. So I want this to be six inches. I want that next one to be six. And I want this one to be six and a quarter, six and a quarter, six and a quarter. And then the bottom piece I'm gonna have to find something else um, to make that work. So the way I'm gonna do this is line up this line right up to the blade. Maybe take out the battery or unplug it for this part, but I'm gonna ro rotate the blade now until I get a tooth right on my mark. Okay, that's right on. If you made a longer fence on this jig, you'd be able to make a stop block and get repeated cuts that way. But what I'm gonna do, grab my combination square, loosen it up and bring it down to where it's even with the board. And then now the next time when I put it in there, I can set it at that exact depth that this one is set at. Just another way to get a repeatable cut. Grab my combination square that's set to that same depth. And now both of these should be the same exact length of cut. Put that off to the side. Now I gotta make sure this one's six and a quarter. Reset your combination square for this depth. Another cut just like that board. This is the fifth side. The length should all be good on these ones. Now I gotta take these two pieces and bring them down so that the lid is flush. 
Let's transfer that depth to right here. Line up the tooth. Let's check the level of it, of this cut. Should come out right at the top of this, perfectly flush. And I gotta get one more just like this. Well, for the bottom piece, I'm actually gonna use a piece of plywood. So I need it to be four and three sixteenths inch wide. Just realized though, I don't know actually if this is 90 degrees or not. Nope, it is not. Looking pretty good. Now it's actually gotta be the exact length as these two sides. I'm gonna set my combination square to this cut. Looking pretty good. I have to set the depth of this thing so that I can cut out this channel right here. I'm gonna line up that mark with my, with my saw tooth, clamp down my adjustment. Check it one more time. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I take my combination square and set this depth so I don't lose it. Just slowly keep moving over the wood until I get the channel the exact width that I want. Okay, I think this is gonna be the one. So I'm gonna set the depth for this cut. Perfect fit. hat. So I'm going to sand that part. I'm going to sand these surfaces, that surface, and then the inside surfaces. And everything else I can sand after I assemble it. The bottom piece is nicely sanded um, plywood, and then the other side is actually pre-finished plywood, which is pretty nice stuff. Jeez. That's problematic. Usually I'd use wood glue for this, but just to speed up the process, I'm gonna use this glue. Two 
220 grit. Now I'm gonna cut the plugs to fill these screw holes with this plug cutter. What's nice about this plug cutter is you can use any species of wood you want. Instead of dicing up a big long dowel, you can just make these little plugs. And I think I'm gonna use this walnut. Now I can just break these plugs loose. Time to trim them. No! <sighs> well, I dented the lid, the corner, pretty good. And so it goes. So when I had the drill bit going on the slower setting, I had this tear out. It really did show up on these plugs. So I think I'm just gonna use a little wood filler and it's not gonna look great, but it'll look better than it does right now. Now I'll leave that to dry for, it really doesn't take that long, maybe 15, 20 minutes.
We'll have an idea as to how to fix this. Think how I'm gonna do it. Let's get it a little bit wet. Use an iron, see if I can fix that corner a little bit. I'm not entirely sure this is gonna work. I've removed dents before, but I've never tried to fix a corner with uh, moisture. Okay, I wanna get the camera closer though. Let's see, this corner's the worst. Oh, it did fix it a little bit. Yes. It's not perfect, but that really... That worked really well. Okay, back to the tripod. Okay, so now what I'm gonna have to do, cut off the tiniest little bit. Make sure the depth is the right depth. Ah. So now I'm gonna try to transfer the same uh, profile that's sticking past the main body here to the lid. So I've got the depth that I'm gonna cut away. First things first, I gotta get the depth of the cut right, which is about an eighth of an inch deep. And just adjust it until I'm directly at the, the mark I just made. I decided I am gonna clean up this. You don't have to. You know, the little V grooves from the, the, the teeth are just fine, but I'm gonna clean it up with a router. It's not gonna take very long and it's gonna, I think it's gonna really add to the look. You know, I'm just gonna clamp down this top with a piece of tape. Well, that worked pretty good. I'm just gonna put a little piece of tape down here around the edge because I need to soften this edge a little bit with some sandpaper and I don't want to scratch the surface. All right, I'm using this wood oil by Natura One Coat. Alder is a pretty soft wood. 
pre-drilling is probably not super necessary, so I'm just gonna leave it out. Bless me.